Bye. The comptroller of Nassau County, George Maragas, is serving 1.3 million people and his office acts as fiscal watchdog for this county, which has an annual budget of $2.6 billion. He's also focusing on an innovative role of the county in helping small and minority-owned businesses. The Nassau County Comptroller stopped by at ITV Studios recently and spoke with Ashok Vyas about various issues. Here's some highlights. Georgie, now um, when I say G, that is the way Indians address with respect, mm -hmm. you probably know by now. So Georgie, <laughs> Georgie now, uh, the role as a Comptroller is that you are overviewing, you are auditing and you are making sure that things have happened the way they should have happened. And this involves that uh, the agency uh, whom you are auditing, uh, they should have openness and they should have maintained their records in a way that uh, it, it becomes possible for you and your team to do the proper auditing. So on that account, being a new as a controller as when you were <laughs> new, uh, how was it? I mean, you felt that you were getting uh, the right information as was required to do the correct audit? Uh, well, the, 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 the controller has some very powerful tools. Uh, you know, my authority is quite extensive, actually. I have subpoena power, the same as the, the district attorney, to compel people to turn over records, uh, to provide uh, you know, information, uh, and that's very powerful. So, you know, the, the audit function of the controller is very important to ensure honesty, transparency in government, and efficiency. That's what audits are all, are all about. Uh, and uh, you know, we're very proud that in six years that I've been the controller, and, and certainly in the first couple of years when I went in, I came in from with a, a, a business mentality, business philosophy, that we cannot, government cannot leave, leave be beyond its means, cannot spend more than what it, what it takes in. Uh, and I've impressed upon uh, that on government because we also control the budget. Once the budget is enacted, we control, we manage it. So we audit uh, the agencies, uh, we control the budget, we approve the contracts, and we pay the bills. And as you know, the person who pays the bills, ask your wife, <laughs> has all the power. <laughs> so talking about the power with the controller, and uh, uh, you want to explain, uh, share uh, sort of, make us understand, uh, in 2015 uh, there was this $29 million uh, surplus of uh, generally accepted accounting principle. Right. What, what, what is that surplus? So whenever I, as a layman you read about surplus uh, and then you feel where this addition, additional money came from, what is this? Well, some of the, you know, as we pointed out, it came from two, um, um, two, two uh, places. One was, you know, the expenditures were, were controlled better than anticipated, but there was also uh, more borrowing than, than was needed. Uh, so the combination of those two result, resulted in a surplus, which is overall a positive thing. Now, you can say b borrowing, uh, you know, which we don't advocate to do, but there were some leftover borrowing that uh, in governmental uh, terms uh, is treated as, as revenues. But at the same time, the, the long-term debt of the county decreased because a lot of debt uh, matured uh, last year. I so see. we have a surplus, but we also have a lower long-term debt on, on the books, which is very positive. Uh, you have not seen the kind of growth in the population of the county as you have seen in Queens, though. Queens cannot boast of that much uh, natural area, open spaces as, as Nasa County. So there is something that needs to be addressed for people who go there. Uh, generally, the typical story is uh, when you have some money, you move from Queens to Nasa County, but your kids go back to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the end result is the population of Nasa County is not growing, and especially youth probably don't have that much uh, pull. Uh, which would hold them right there. That, that is true, but uh, we're also now, we're seeing increase in home sales. Those kids that have moved into the city now have grown up. They got married, they're beginning <laughs> to have kids, <laughs> and they're starting to move out in, to Long Island because they, they need more space, and, and the city has become terribly expensive, almost unaffordable, so now they're beginning to move out. That's why we have the, the, the higher uh, home sales. But you're absolutely right. We have to 
to do a lot more in creating affordable housing, you know, around transportation, around the train stations, and 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 we are focused on on, on those developments, uh, you know, what we call tr uh, commuter or transit development uh, centers. Uh, there's a lot of apartments uh, going up in in Mineola, uh, and and throughout Nassau County, you're going to see. Uh, a, a big push for more affordable uh, housing. Talking about uh, various initiatives and one of the initiatives uh, which is addressing the needs of uh, minority and women-owned business, uh, I am glad to share if you are not aware that uh, there is an important member of Indian uh, American community, uh, Mr. Dilip Chauhan, who is uh, working as Director of Southeast Asian Community Affairs. And one of uh, the responsibility that you have assigned for him is uh, to assist your office to ensure uh, that uh, the office addresses the challenges of uh, minority business owners and uh, residents. So how uh, this branch is working out and what are the fresh concerns that you have heard from minority and women-owned business owners? Well, it's tough to start a, a small business, uh, and it's it's tough to 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 compete with uh, with larger players. Uh, we realized um, very early that um, our minority community in Nassau County now is uh, it has grown significantly, represents about thirty five percent of our total population. Thirty five percent, very significant. The South Asian community has grown from one percent about twelve fifteen years ago to close to 10 percent now. It's phenomenal uh, growth. Most of our business, most of our jobs are created by, by small business. Now there was, you know, kind of a, kind of a hidden uh, law or ordinance back in 2002 that was passed that uh, the county had a, a, an obligation, an aspirational goal, you know, to set aside about 16 percent of all products and services, uh, purchases that it, uh, it made to minority and women-owned uh, firms. Uh, like I said, that was hidden, kind of forgotten. It, it, it was never encouraged. Uh, participation of minority and women-owned firms was not being uh, in, invited. And when we did an audit a couple of years ago and, and we said, you know, this is not right, uh, we have, there's, the law is that we need to promote minority and women-owned businesses. We need to aspire, you know, to give them about 16 percent of uh, all the business dollars that we spent. Uh, we needed to change that. We were well underperforming. We were only doing about a seven or eight percent. Uh, so I took it upon the controller's office to uh, institute a major initiative and establish an advisory committee of representatives from the various minority communities as ambassadors to those communities to send out the message that we have a lot of money waiting for you. Come and take it. Come, <laughs> come avail yourself of those, uh, those opportunities. We're going to open up the doors for you. We, we're going to you know, make sure that you, the, the playing field is, is level and, and, and kind of bend over backwards to ensure that, um, uh, that you are successful. We have an obligation f to support you and win that, uh, you know, win that business.